Hello, hello guys. Welcome back. And I'm Viper. And today we're going to be visiting bombers. I have had a lot of requests on doing bombers. And there's basically two types. There is precision bombers and carpet bombers. Now whether it's four bombs or 40 bombs, that's still a carpet bomber because you're dropping multiple munitions on a section. A precision bomber is one like this where you drop in one bomb per section. So let's start real quick going into the missile base right here. As we know, if you watch my other video, this is a priority sector. And we're going to target kind of to the center on a big target like this. We want to drop two and then one more there. And that's our four bombs. And usually it'll flip. I'm seeing a lot of stuff done in here already. So it may or may not flip. Now, um, it probably won't flip, but no, it did. We got it. And kind of jumping in the turret here. See if we can keep this guy from getting them big 30s on us. Swift wants to play a little bit. I don't think he's going to have a change of heart here in just a minute. Alright, and my tail's out. I can't really even get straight, can I? Let's see if I can at least drop something here. Alright, my tail's back. I'm going to climb a little bit, get out of some of this foray going on. So the biggest deal uh, with the precision bombs, you kind of, you know, you're going to aim precision. You want to maybe slow down a little bit, hit the brakes, you know, get you a little bit more accuracy going there. And then when you get near the center drop, you know, you do have a little bit of form, form momentum. So if you want to drop just a hair before you hit that center, you know, that works too. Now, the airbase is not a prime place for a bomber. Uh, it takes easily, it's very hard to flip. Um, there are exceptions, uh, you know, like with everything, but uh, usually that's not where you want to go. But anyways, um, I'm a little too high, so we're going to start dropping that mountain team. My bombs are coming into play here. Let's see if it can affect this right here we have one here and maneuvering as a bomber is part of it so adding a little bit of maneuverability to your bombers not a bad idea it helps you jig in and out of their sectors and um, be able to at least hit something now between the missile base and me uh, we got air supremacy, so uh, <laughs> unless these bots do something really quick, uh, it looks like it's going to be a very short-lived game. But let's see if they can at least float the middle or something. In the meantime, um, getting your reticle right here, as you see this round circle and this X in the middle, um, you kind of want to, you know, you can scroll in and out, of course, of your of your bomb site. And kind of like right about there is where I would drop it. So, as you see, I hit my brake going into that little sector, and then I'm you know, I speed up coming out of it, go to the next one, and maybe hit it a little bit. And that just enhances your accuracy, especially when you're this high up at almost you know, 4,000 meters. You know, we're way up here, and I'm doing this on purpose. I do not have a bomb site on here, um, as in uh, outboard. Uh, an outboard piece of equipment. It's not a bomb site. Um, I actually have hard points put on here to decrease my load time, reload time. The bomb site makes, I guess, a little bit of a difference, but I have no problem hitting stuff even at extreme altitudes where I, I don't normally operate up here, but again, I'm trying to make a point of just you know, these are pretty accurate, and I really don't need to, to put a bomb. I'm going to try to have the faster reload, um, and that makes you more effective 
as a bomber, uh, being able to reload quickly and then drop on a zone uh, as fast as possible. So, to me, that's a priority. You know, not not so much the the accuracy is on you. You know, if you're going too fast coming in a zone or you know whatever, then your accuracy is going to be up. See, I, I had no problem flipping that zone, and that's you know way up here. Where again, I don't. I'm usually down there. See where that bomber is? That's usually where I'm sitting, not way up here. But again, to make a point, you don't need that bomb sight to be accurate. I'm still deadly accurate with this thing without it. So that was quick, you know, just a very quick, easy match. Unfortunately, uh, it just it didn't take nothing, you know, to win that. And the flip side of winning really fast like that is you don't rack up a whole lot of points but it is a win so if you're looking for the win and you're looking to get materials because as y'all know the only way you get materials is via a win you cannot collect these materials right here through a loss so when you want your materials you need to start racking up stuff you need more you know flat instruments or heat rings or whatever that's you know you, you got to win anyways Kind of looking at this, I flipped four sectors, uh, did about 47,500 in ground damage. Uh, it was pretty effective, you know, it was just, you know, very quick. Uh, there wasn't no mercy, <laughs> so to speak, on this game. But that's it, you know, it's, it's, that was a precision bomber, and that's how you want to fly that. Now, let's switch to a carpet style bomber. So, we're going to go to the RB 17. Uh, a lot of people see now the weather again is the RB17 or you know like the JU88A. This is also a carpet bomber. Um, it doesn't matter, you know. It doesn't really matter. It's just uh, these take forever to get around. This will be a lot faster uh, for the purposes of demonstration, and we're going to kind of show you the difference. Now, on a precision bomber, you have a circle uh, with your you know, reticle in the middle of that circle. And on a carpet bomber, you're going to have two parallel lines with a horizontal line connecting them going across and the X in the middle of the horizontal line. The horizontal line in between the two lines connecting, the connecting line is what I call the wall. Okay? So, before the wall gets to the sector you're bombing, and now there's a difference between sector in zone. So when I say sector, it could be the AA sector or uh, a building. It's a square of buildings or whatever. That's a sector. Okay. So when you're bombing a sector and the wall of that comes to the front of it, you want to drop before it actually turns yellow. If you're into the sector and it turns yellow when you're dropping, you're too late. You're going to bomb outside of it. Okay. Um, so make sure you are prepping yourself and, and lining up and doing all that before you hit that sector that you're planning to drop on. Otherwise, you're going to miss. I, I promise you that. All right. Attention. You are entering the combat zone. Get ready so for battle. We got a humans in here. It's the Great Garrison Roundup match. This is one of the worst maps for a bomber, but, you know, it, it'll get the point across. So, now, we went from precision bombing to carpet bombing. There, there, there is a difference. And the RB is a little bit of a challenge because it only gets three drops of six bombs per drop versus, you know, four or five or whatever some others or like the b-32 that drops bombs across the continent so there is a little bit of a difference in the way this plays out so there you see here you have your two parallel lines you have your line going across and whatever that wall right here is what you want to okay so watch so as i'm coming up here i'm going to hit my brakes just a hair wall hits drop right in front of it and again drop right in front of it and then my final one, drop right in front of it. If you're dropping when you're turning yellow, that's too late. That's way too late. And you're going to miss your target. OK, 
tell you you're not gonna you're not gonna make it. Now there is this was just you know medium or high altitude drops, okay? Now there is something else you can do. You can do low altitude bombing. Some people hate it, some people love it, some people curse it, hey, whatever, to each your own. But it is an alternative. So there is a bomb site you can get, and it's a low altitude. You can see it puts the reticle out in front of me to where I can see it. Again, the same principle is you're gonna bomb on the front side of it as you're about to go into that sector. And then, as you can see, it took it all out. I had no problems taking those out, okay? And now this is low altitude bombing. And again, I do have the low altitude bomb site downloaded. Um, so I will be able to do that. And you will need that. There is a uh, couple places. Uh, I get mine off of Hackabase, if you're not familiar with that. Um, it's on the forums and whatever, but it's you can Google it, whatever you want. It's pretty simple. And there's the site. So that is carpet bombing. So the only the major difference is you're going to be dropping outside of it, basically on the front side, as your wall, as what I call the wall again of the reticle, comes to the front edge of the sector. You're going to literally drop there or start your drop there because you're carpeting the sector with multiple munitions. You're not. Um, going to be dropping dead center because if you do that you're going to end up missing okay so here we go kind of going in let's see what we got here all right piece of that left piece of that left Alright, we got it. Alright. Okay, so coming into this sector you know again when you're doing it high or low you know the principles the same and you, you're going to be wanting to drop your your bombs on the front side of the sector right here so you drop front side the danger low altitude bombing is you're going to get a lot of fire you might die a whole lot whatever it's fun it's something different man you know I, I, like I said there's people that criticize it and they oh yeah I said whatever whatever hey man teach your own brother if somebody wants to do something a little bit different and have fun that's what the game is about playing the game it's about having a good time it's about enjoying yourself it's about entertainment so if this is entertaining you and you are getting a kick out of doing this, then nobody can fault you for it. Nobody can say otherwise or whatever, okay? If, and if they don't like it, hey man, you know, it's not for you to like or dislike. It's not your business what I do. It's for me to enjoy my game, how I want to enjoy it, fly these planes how I want to fly them, and just have a good time with it. You know, if I want to try something a little bit different, hey man, you know, who are you to judge, you know? and and that's the thing you know nobody's nobody should be here judging anybody it's it's about doing that and sometimes in that experimentation mode while you're sitting here playing with different things is when you might learn something that actually is a better way to do it you know and through that experimentation mode is how we learn to do all these things is why we now have a low altitude bomb site it's because people experimented with this. It's, you know, hey, man, what would happen if I do this or this, you know? And technically, you know, 
you're more accurate when you bomb from low. And your 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 bombs are more accurate, your your drops are gonna be more accurate, all that. So why wouldn't you wanna be more accurate? You know, I I, I don't get it, you know, but again, you know, we got people of of all different walks of life and everybody wants to judge others and that's not right either. So Flying a bomber, you will end up spending a lot of time in a turret, high, low, or otherwise. That's just part of the game. Um, be prepared to die a lot sometimes. You're going to have bad games where I've actually had bot heavies just actually hump both of them. I've had both bot heavies hunting me in a game, and there wasn't nothing I could do about it, man. And, you know, when you're solo, that kind of sucks. You know, when you have a wingman, that's not so bad because you can call on that wingman to help you out or whatever and maybe finally take some of that pressure off but you know that's just part of flying a bomber and that's just you get something you're going to learn to live with and if you're not going to like it or you don't think that's for you then you know that's not for you and there's a lot of people that don't want to fly bombers that, that don't like what a bomber is or what it stands for or how it plays or whatever their reasons are they just they're not playing bombers and that's fine you know that that's again to each your own and I don't judge and more power to you but for those that do and have an interest in diversifying their playing field uh, kudos to you yeah, I believe everybody should fly every one of the five different kinds of aircraft available uh, aircraft types to better understand how the game works um, it's only going to benefit you, okay, to understand that. So, playing bombers and GAs and multi rolls gets you, you know, in a better position to understand how to deal and counteract each one of those. If you've never played them, then you're actually very limited on your own knowledge base. And in my opinion, that hurts you. Um, now, I am not a bomber main. I, I know bombers. I, I can get in them, and I, as you see, I can, I can do my thing, and you know, I'm pretty, pretty good at it. But I'm not, you know, like a super bomber guy. Like we, we all know who they are. I'm not gonna name names. And you know, there's some guys in OWSS and Drax and all that that are really, really good bomber guys. Hey, great. Um, I'm not a bomber main. I fly them when I need to. I fly them as a change up to have some diversity uh, but you know that's what this is for now let's cover this real quick uh, 67 3 in ground damage flip five sectors um, and you know did pretty good it was a very fast game uh, as far as that's concerned and you know didn't have a whole lot of time to score real big money but it wasn't sad it wasn't a bad score either uh, it, it did well. So there you go, gentlemen uh, and ladies. There, you, there is carpet bombing. Like I said, whether it's five, eight, ten, or forty, that's a carpet bombing. Whenever you're dropping multiple munitions per drop, that is considered carpet bombing. Whenever you're dropping one bomb at a time, that is precision bombing. Okay, and that's just what it is. Um, I'm not here to argue with anybody. I'm not here to, you know, debate semantics or the English language. So that is how the military puts it. Okay. So that is per the military guidelines as to what they consider and how they classify their aircraft and equipment and everything else. This is the best, uh, I can do at this point that I know from the questions and stuff that I've received. If there is something more in depth that you guys want to see or understand about, you know, please, you know, message me down below in the comments and, you know, let me know what that is that, that you're looking for. And I'd be happy to, 
you know, get in and discuss that even in greater detail if I have to or whatever, and go into the, you know, quantum physics mechanics of, of bombers if we have to, but I, I don't think so. But hey, guys, you know, this is this is it. Um, you can always rewind this and look back. It, it's about just taking your time. Don't be afraid to slow down a little bit. You know, if you feel you're in a position where you can't slow down, then that means you probably need to be in your turret. And if you overshoot the, the site that you're going to bomb, that's fine. If you can get in your turret and know you're going to stay alive coming out of that, then it's worth it. Then you can always turn back around and come in and finish bombing it. But I've seen guys that they're getting hit from behind and just stay in their bomb site to try to fit and usually they die before they can drop their whole bomb load. Well, that doesn't make sense either. Now you gotta wait to spawn and spawn and come all the way back in and whatever and that kills your game, so to speak, as a bomber. Whereas if you just took out the time to jump in that turret, uh, you could probably either kill or turn around that aircraft that's on you and get them off of you. So either way, that's a win. And you're going to have to learn to do that. You know, pressing that T button, getting in that turret is essential in a bomber. you got to do it. The turrets uh, on these are, get pretty darn strong. Eh, I would say starting at Tier 7-ish, uh, they're decent. Uh, tier 8 and up, they're very strong. As you saw, that RB ain't no joke. As you get up even further, you know, the... I know the 131 and the SU-10 are absolute monsters in Tier 10 with their turrets. This thing, the SU-10, um, for these who don't know, you have your standard rear turret and you have a top turret. Uh, and if you know how to do it, you can angle up a hair and you end up getting both turrets on whatever's behind you. And you absolutely just melt them with that. So it's got a very, very hard hit uh, set of turrets on this. And it's more of a gunship, actually, than it is a bomber, I believe. The 131 has just a rear turret, uh, but it's very effective, long-range, and hard-hitting. So the 131s are extremely effective. Uh, and if you're vigilant, that's the other thing. you got to be very situationally aware of what's around you, what's coming at you. You know, if you see a heavy coming at you, you need to start maneuvering. You need to start thinking about getting your tail end on them and swinging a turret in the end of you, or you're going to be in trouble in a minute. So uh, paying attention to your mini map that's down in the corner and watching the battlefield unfold is very important. To me, that is probably the most important part of this. You know, dropping bombs is, to me, a lot easier and trying to keep track of everybody and what's coming at you and whatever. So those are the two most important factors of bombing. Vigilance, situational awareness, and just precision. That's all. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for visiting my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Godspeed and God bless.